Hi, I'm Nikki. I'm the Obsessive Bookseller. And today let's talk about Daisy's Run by Scott Barron. It's book one in the Clockwork Chimera series. And to my knowledge, this is a self-published series. I was offered a review copy for audio production. And for the record, the audio was awesome. The narrator was super relatable and had just a slight edge of paranoia in her voice through the whole thing that really served to enhance the story. And as for the story itself, the reason I selected it is because it got a lot of really good reviews on Goodreads. About 40% of the way through the book, I was enjoying it, but I hadn't read anything that I hadn't read before. It was your typical space journey. There's something wrong with the ship. The crew is really fun and they have a lot of back and forth dynamics who's sleeping with who. And I got to a point where because there were no new ideas being presented, I set the book down as a DNF. For whatever reason, I needed something to listen to that I didn't have to concentrate super hard on. So I picked it back up about a week later. And about 10 minutes in is when the story flipped on its head. And suddenly, we have something that was quite original and I could start to see why people were raving about the book. I think my initial feedback is that the inciting moment, the thing that made his book unique, should have been presented much earlier because it was only random chance that I picked the book back up in the first place. The main character was okay. She was quite cheeky, which I always like, but she was not very relatable. She didn't speak like a lot of women characters that I've read, or in, for that matter, women that I'm around in my life. She spoke more like how a man wishes a woman would speak, especially within reference to the sexual innuendos and scenes. Uh, it was very heavy handed from a male perspective and kind of funny in how inaccurate it felt to me, but you know, one woman's opinion, but that was one of the things that put me off initially. The book also used one of my least favorite tropes. I can't stand it in books. I have a hard time even reading it. And it's when there's a misunderstanding between two characters and the only way to clear it up is if one character gives the other character enough time to explain. But no, usually they're just so distraught and caught up in the emotion that I can't handle it. And so no, you don't get to explain. Get away from me. I don't want to hear it. When in reality, how hard is it to talk over someone and tell them what they need to hear? In books and in movies, it's used as a tool to perpetuate the plot. If it's a misunderstanding that could be resolved with a simple conversation, well, that's not any good. There's no drama with that. So they put that trope in there to extend the plot. In this case, it didn't use that trope only once, it used it a couple of times throughout the book, and that drove me crazy. And if that trope doesn't bother you at all, then I think you'd actually really like the book. Overall, I think the author has something here, and I can see why it has some positive reviews on Goodreads. There were enough things that didn't quite work for me that I think I'm going to end my rating at a 2.5 stars. It was a little better than okay, but I'm not sure if I liked it or not. I'm still kind of mulling that over. At the moment, I have no plans to continue. On my book blog and on Goodreads, I'm kind of known for a feature, other books you might like, where I review a book and then I suggest other titles that are similar. So I thought I would pull that feature into my book tubing as well. Perdition by Anna Guire. Similar camaraderie, similar intense scenes. I mean, it takes place on a giant space prison. It was rad. Fortune's Pawn by Rachel Bach. Murderbot Diaries by Martha Wells. Just because I cannot have a sci-fi recommendation with that being on it. But if you like cheeky main characters, this is the way to go. One of the best characters in literature at the moment for me. A recent one with some comparable twists, uh, To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher Pallowini. And finally, the holy grail of sci-fi, in my opinion, Leviathan Wakes by James S.A. Corey.
it's the ultimate things going wrong on a ship with a lovable crew story. So there's my review. Thank you so much for tuning in and I will catch you next time.